Good afternoon, dreamers, and welcome back to another episode of the Dreams Homestead. My name is Anne Marie. Today, I'm going to do a little bit of a different kind of video, um, and it's based on some of the comments that I've had on my videos recently and on my YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that, where people have, I think, have a misconception of me and my thoughts and ideas and whatnot. And so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight into that, um, into who I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing and stuff like that. So um, my title, I can't do this. Oh my gosh, those words come to me so often. Um, but what I want to talk to you guys today is about a lesson I learned a long time ago from my mom, from just life. Um, about I can't versus I won't. And there's a big difference between I can't do something or I won't or I'm not willing. Um, there's some things that I can do that I shouldn't do. You know, like if I have a gun, I can go rob a bank, but I'm not going to because it's not the good thing to do. So, um, but today I want to mainly focus on what I can do versus what I won't do. Cause I hear people say all the time, I can't, I can't do what you're doing. I can't build a house. I can't do this. I can't that. And, um, when I was little, my mom hated the words. I can't uh, right up until the day that she passed. She hated those words. I can't. And, um, I remember being really little and I would say, I can't do something. And she would say, why can't you? And then I'd have to stop and think, well, why can't I? Because I'm too short. I can't reach that bookshelf or something. And she would ask me how I was going to fix that problem. Go get a stool. you know. But you can. You just have to find a way to do it. And um, so that was kind of what was drilled into me from a really young age is that um, I can do most things. I just have to figure out a way to do it. Um, as I became a teenager, I would say, I can't, I can't go take the garbage out. It's snowing outside or actually it didn't snow there, but it was raining or whatever. And she would say, you can't, or you won't. And that, um, those words followed me through everything I did in life. Um, so what I want to talk to you guys about are the comments about you're so gutsy, you're courageous, you're brave. Um, your willingness to go do this. Um, those are not words that I would use to describe myself. I spent a lot of my life comparing my insides to other people's outsides. And I would see other people go do all this stuff. And on the inside, I was thinking, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. And then I'd have to ask myself, why can't I? Why can't I build a house? Why can't I convert a shed to a house? Why can't I build a chicken coop. Why can't I change the tire on my car? Um, are those things that I can't do physically or that I won't do? One of the things that um, I don't talk a lot about on my channel, not that it's a secret, it's just um, something that it's life, it's my life and I don't complain about it or put too much. It doesn't define who I am, is that I am disabled and um, and it's a physical disability. And a lot of times um, there are things that I can do, but it costs me a lot of pain. Um, so I have chronic pain issues and I have um, physical, what did they say? Uh, skeletal and muscular <laughs> problems. Um, so there are times where, you know, when I'm really tired, I trip and fall a lot. And then when I trip and I fall, I injure myself even more. And then I'm out of it for a while. So, um, and I don't put that on camera to show you guys. Maybe I should, but um, I don't put that out there. It's just me. It's not something that I complain about because complaining about being in pain doesn't make it go away. It doesn't make it any better. So you just kind of learn, you know, and those of you who have chronic pain, I'm sure can relate to this, but you just kind of do life. Um, today I am in extreme pain after being on that train for five days. I laid in the bed for until two o'clock this afternoon before I got up to do anything. Um, 
because I'm in pain. So I have a lot of days like that. That's part of the reason why it took me 18 months to get as far as I did on this tiny house that I'm in right now is that um, there are many days that, I wouldn't say many, there are days that I cannot do anything physically and um, it just is what it is. When I hear people say things like you're gutsy, you're brave, you're courageous, your willingness to go start all over again, it, that's not me. I have had to learn to pick myself up, brush myself off, and just keep going. I was not willing to sell this tiny house. I was not willingly wanting to move across the United States. Um, am I okay with that now? Absolutely. After going out there and seeing the Ozarks, absolutely. Uh, it is so gorgeous. I'm super excited about where my journey is taking me. But... Um, I didn't just willingly wake up and go, oh yeah, let's go do this today. I went through a lot of struggle, a lot of tears, uh, a lot of pain, um, emotional pain to get there. One of the things that I do a lot of is what if, you know, for many years I was frozen in fear. I wouldn't do anything because I was so scared of what ifs. What if the car broke down? Um, I wanted to take my kids camping and it was just me and four kids and, you know, I could say, well, what if the car broke down? What if this happened? What if that happened? What if I got mugged or whatever, and then never go? And where would that have got me? Uh, it would have gotten me to a life of never going anywhere. Um, I can't what if myself out of life. And that's basically what I had done for a long time. So instead, I just said, kind of threw caution to the wind and said, forget it. I'm going to pack up these four kids. We're going to throw them in the car. I'm going to go see the Grand Canyon. And we did. We traveled 2,800 miles, me and four kids, and um, and had a blast. And those are some of the greatest memories ever. Uh, my first train trip across the United States, I was terrified. It was me and my 13-year-old daughter. You know, at the time she was 13. It was right after 9-11. All the um, train stations were on high alert, red alert for terrorism. And... Um, and her and I packed a bag and got on the train and went all the way across the United States. And we got to see New York and Boston and Washington, D.C. and Chicago and Albuquerque, New Mexico and all these different places. And I could have stayed at home and said, well, what if, you know, what if I lost my wallet along the way? What if, you know, we got mugged or <laughs> kidnapped or what if somebody bombs one of the train stations, you know, whatever. And we wouldn't have those memories today. Um so I can't what if my way out of life. And that's all pretty much what I want to do with this channel is to show people that you can have dreams and then you can go do those dreams. You can do those little tiny goals to get you towards those dreams instead of staying stuck in fear. Um, I don't want to live in fear. That's part of the reason why I don't watch the news anymore. I don't read the newspapers. I don't want to live in that fear of what if thing. <clears throat> now I won't say that it's not good to be prepared for those what ifs. It is still good to ask ourselves, well, what if this happens? What am I going to do? Um, I do prepare as much as I can. Um, that's just for life. And you know, if the SHTF stuff and all that, I can, um, what if, and then figure out a way to counteract that what if situation, but I'm not going to stay sitting in fear, terrorized and not do any action at all, which was my old pattern. Um, so gutsy, brave, courageous, willing, uh, -uh not me. Um, in on the inside, terrified, uh, <laughs> just, um, a lot of terror, a lot of fear, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But I'm still going to get out and go get it done. Um, so I can't versus I won't. Um, I can do a lot of things. I choose not to do some things. Some things I look at and go, you know, like doing this ceiling in here. You guys can't see it on this camera, but doing the ceiling in here, I can go up and down a ladder. Um, I can put the, ce the ceiling up but then I pay the price for it later physically. And um, so I have to ask myself, is it really worth it? Or should I just have my brother come help me or something like that, just so that I can hurry up and get it done. So there's a lot of things that 
I can do, but I won't do anymore. My ex-husband and I had a um, handyman business and we used to go out and do jobs together, had a lot of fun, learned a ton of stuff, um, doing different handyman jobs, all, all different kinds of stuff. And, um, at the time I was going to physical therapy and I was having a lot of, a lot of pain issues and I was trying to find answers for those pain issues. And at the time the doctors, I had two different doctors that told me, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to wind up in a wheelchair. I love building. I like working on stuff. That's my thing. I like doing it, building chicken coops, you know, just different things. Um, I enjoy building. And when they told me that, I was like, ah, oh, I can't do that anymore. You know, what am I going to do? And um, it just didn't sound like a life that I wanted for me. I had to learn to do things a lot slower, <laughs> you know, to slow down and remind myself that I'm not 25 and able-bodied anymore. But, um, but I can still do them. They're just, those things are, I do them slower. So I also have in my head constantly weighing, is it worth it? Or should I, you know, um, should I have somebody else do this or should I do it? And then, I, and knowing that I'm going to pay that price for it afterwards. And I'd say nine times out of 10, I wind up doing it myself, but, um, but I know that when I do it, I'm going to pay a price for it. So there, the other thing I wanted to talk about is I know that there are disabled people that can't do a lot of stuff. Um, or they can, and they would pay a price for it, um, like I do. So I have to remind myself when I'm climbing up those ladders and stuff, it's not that I can't do it, but sometimes I won't do it. And I won't do it because it's beneficial to me to not do it and have somebody else do it. So on my channel, I get a lot of comments, and even on Facebook, of people saying, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing, but I can't. So in wrapping this up, um, First of all, I want to tell you guys, don't compare your insides to my outsides because what you see on the outside isn't always what's going on in here or in here. <laughs> and the other thing is, um, if you find yourself saying, I can't, stop and ask yourself, why can't you? Why can't you? And if there's a valid reason why you can't, then that's fine. But is it really that you can't or that you won't? You're just not willing to. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You know, I'm not cutting down on anybody for the comments. Look, like you guys have all been so encouraging and wonderful. But what I would like to do is encourage you to go follow what your dream is. It might not be building a house or whatever. But I want you all to go follow your dream. Make your life happy. Do what makes you happy. And um, when you hear yourself in your head telling yourself, I can't, ask yourself, why not? Anyhow, that's all for today. I will hopefully have some more content up here for you guys soon. I'm going to be packing up all this stuff and um, hopefully selling this tiny house soon so that I can move out to the Ozarks and start all over again. We'll talk to you later.